Hello guys, Seb here uh, with another book review. Today we have um, uh, The Weatherly Guide to Drawing Animals, an excellent book written by Joe Weatherly. Joe Weatherly is an American artist, a, a very well established American artist. He's an expert in animal drawing um, and has worked for many clients in the entertainment industry, including Nickelodeon and many well known entertainment companies. And he is also very respected for his efforts in conservation and his animal drawings are very very recognizable and he's a very a very established artist uh, one of his um, students shannon beaumont who teaches at cg masters academy was my teacher and she recommended this book to me um, many teachers across the industry recommend this book I consider it's probably the best book to learn how to draw animals. So that's why I'm reviewing this one. Um, it's especially good for beginners, uh, people that haven't drawn um, before. Um, it's great for that because it doesn't only cover animals, but it has great tips for beginners. So let's see. I'll say hello to Giuseppe. He's always looking at us. Hey Giuseppe, what's up? So the book is great. Um, it covers is great since it covers uh, everything that is basic for a good drawing. Uh, that is uh, gesture, action, and construction, and then it covers a little bit of anatomy. I would say the pros of this book is exactly that, and the fact that it teaches you what you need to know before doing a painting or a good drawing. It teaches you the underlying principles that you need to really repeat 1,000 times, 100 times before you really become good at drawing. And then after you've done that, you can start doing all the polishing and all the detailing. But this book covers all that basic, the basic structure of what you really need to know, what you need to repeat a thousand times. And this book lays that out very, very well. Probably you, if you want to draw animals, you just need this book for the first, I don't know, three years, four years, or maybe three years, four, maybe too much. And then you can get another book that has paintings of animals, and then you can add those those kind of stuff to to your knowledge of drawing. I would I would say this book is not so good uh, in the sense that it doesn't cover very well rendering or painting, and uh, so. It's not good for that and also it's not good for <clears throat> for learning advanced anatomy okay so the lay layout of the book it starts with general tips um, very very general tips uh, especially good for the beginner um, here's we go it's especially good in the sense that it lays out uh, very specific questions that always beginners might have so hey if I want to draw animals where should I draw them so it talks about places where you can go draw animals around your your vicinity so he talks about this equestrian centers that are very good if you want to learn how to draw horses or zoos so these people are very um, you know judgmental about zoos uh, and I know zoos aren't very good in many senses but for drawing sadly uh, not sadly, but fortunately, it's a, a thing you can use zoos for. You just go to a zoo and start drawing their animals, which hopefully will be animals that have been rescued and not captured from the zoo. Um, then, after laying out these very basic principles, um, he starts talking about gesture and action. Okay, but before we continue, I want to point out this that is very important, which is keeping a sketchbook. And he really emphasizes that. Uh, that's something everyone should do. Um, and try to at least draw once a day a little thing. I mean, if you cannot draw a lot in, in a day, just do a little sketch, maybe an imaginary sketch. You don't need to do something very elaborate. But try to, to keep your, your skills without rust. Okay. Then he lays out all those principles that are very important. Um, <clears throat> Gesture is the basis for any good drawing and uh, looking at the book you will probably understand that let me get closer it talks about line of action and many many concepts that are special that are very relevant every now and then in the book there are these tips uh, like these gray boxes that are so 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 helpful 
um, avoiding patterns, avoiding repetition, straight against curves. Uh, very relevant principles that are going to help you to become a better draftsman. And in many places, he will also cover uh, steps on how to do a proper drawing. Like right now, he's starting with a line of action and he just lays out a gesture and then on top of, the, of that, he keeps drawing. Um, so this page here, I think, is gold and I, I've used it as reference for some drawings I've done. Um, especially these, these, these two drawings, they lay out very good, um, some kind of design sense that you need to have when you're probably doing concept development, concept design, um, and stuff like that. After laying out the gesture or the chapter of gesture, he goes into construction. And this is probably one of the most important topics that you can learn in any kind of drawing, be it a hard surface drawing, be it um, figure drawing, or in this case, animal drawing. And it's primitives, primitive shapes. Um, everything that you're going to draw in your life is going to be covered or made of primitive shapes. And in this book, Joe Weatherly lays this down in such a good way that that's what I say, that you will never need another book for drawing animals. Um, other than the ones that I, than the fact that I mentioned that it, this book is not a solution for pay, for the painting stage. This is for the underlying structure. Okay, so if you if you think about an iceberg, the, like the iceberg analogy, this book is probably the eighty percent of the iceberg that is below the water, and then all those shiny details that that your friends and your family and the people are going to admire. That's the twenty percent that is up and. This book is not so good for that, but it is good for the other 80. People aren't going to see, but uh, you need really um, need to put your effort on that. Okay, so look how Joe simplifies these shapes of animals very well. And if you can understand these shapes, you're going to become a very good draftsman. Okay, so look at that. He, he covers all of that, and you really should ought to study this book a lot. Okay, so let's move on. Here's another example where he does that, okay? Then after talking about uh, structure, he covers a uh, form, okay? How to properly lay down form with line, okay? With line. And he also does like, um, um, how do you say that? Like drawing to, to convey form, okay? So he, he uses, for example, this very good uh, concept of tangents, of avoiding tangents, okay? And he sets a good example here that can help people a lot to understand that concept better. Okay, then he goes ahead and lays down some other topics, perspective and stuff that can be helpful for you if you don't understand perspective. But yeah, this book covers a lot of information that is related to any field of drawing, not only animal drawing. Then he goes into the skeleton, into the main muscular uh, groups. These groups are generalized, so that's why I say that this book covers anatomy, but um, it's not the best for uh, advanced anatomy. Uh, I would say the third weight lodge books are very good for that, or maybe the Elliot Goldfinger one, the Atlas of Animal Anatomy. Then this is another page that is golden in this book, which is uh, Comparative Anatomy. And there are some other books about Comparative Anatomy and websites. And I know Scott Eden has a workshop about uh, Comparative Anatomy that is really helpful for concept designers and concept artists. And really for anyone who wants to draw or design fantasy animals, because it's probably, it lays down how every major uh, animal in the planet is built and here's the example uh, if we were if we uh, humans were to walk in the forest we'll just I mean there's a comparison on, of how our structures are made which are in fact very similar to those of um, of those other mammals like tigers and dogs and cows it's not that different and understanding this concept will help you a lot to do that. So here it is. So actually, um, all those animals walk on their hands. 
and you will see this and understand this better if you study this book. Okay, and then he starts um, talking more about anatomy, the differences between herbivores and carnivores, and so on. And um, after about 77, 80 pages or something of covering different principles that are going to be very helpful for you, which is probably a third of the book, I think, um, probably a little bit less than a half. Then he starts this very, very part, uh, very important part that is so valuable of this book, and is is that. As you see at the beginning, in the table of contents, he's going to talk, to talk about very different animals and how to draw them. That's what I say, that this book can be so helpful for beginners because you are going to learn about different uh, animals. So he starts with elephants and so on. And he talks about donkeys, horses which are so important in fantasy art, like there are so many knights in horses, um, princesses in horses, I don't know, horses uh, carrying loads. It's, it's um, very, very relevant. So yeah, totally recommend it. This book is golden. Like it's, if you just gonna have uh, say five art books or 10 art books, this book should be there along with the Loomis ones. And I just want to say something here. Uh, he has uh, th this very special final word uh, in this book. And when you get it, read it and it will illumin illuminate your, your thought. Okay, that's it guys. Hope you like it.